Hi, everyone. Welcome. It's Joseph. And today I'm going to be here with um, fabulous co-host Chris. Can't, no, can't, uh, Cassie, listen to me. Um, I got <laughs> thrown you. off. I got thrown <laughs> off because usually it's Chris's lips that show up first. And Cassie's just beautifully <laughs> blended. Um, anyway, thank you for um, tuning in and watching. T uh, we have a very, very interesting uh, hour for you. And as I would suggest, just in case you hear something, maybe a quote or um, some a book to read, or you never know what the icons are going to talk about. But I do suggest that you actually have something to write on, just in case something comes out that seems interesting to you. Um, we do encourage you to watch all the documents, uh, documentaries that are on YouTube, Iconics Live. And with that being said, I'm really excited to get going on this because there's a lot that I want to hear, but I'm going to pass it over to the beautiful Miss Cassie, Cassie from Denver. How are you? I'm very well, Joseph. Thank you so much. And it's so, I'm, I'm honored. As always, I've done this a few times with you, Joseph, where Chris and Andy were traveling or um, something came up and I've been able to step in. I could never fill her shoes, but... Um, I definitely am honored to be here with this dynamic duo, which this couple have been in the hairdressing industry collectively for over 70 years. No. Europe. <laughs> That's just me. That's just me. <laughs> <laughs> He's the <laughs> Grand Masters, Raymond Besson, a.k.a. Mr. Cheesy Wheezy, hairdresser. Oh to the stars, including Diana Doors, and teacher to Vidal Sassoon. This man was named one of the top 100 hairstylists of all times. His beautiful wife has worked in many aspects of product development, marketing, sales education, and schools. She's a yoga teacher um, and host of women's wellness retreats. Together, they are educators from their hearts. Meet the spirited and powerful Mary and Philip Wilson. Woo! Yeah! Holy wow. Toledo, Ohio! <laughs> well done! Oh, well, well, I think that. we're finished now. That's well, good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's no. right. That no. was great. It's time to kidding. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I'm a, that's impressive. Uh, that's very impressive, actually. And it should be that impressive, right? Because we have been around for a while to accumulate yes. all that beautiful wealth of education and, and knowledge. But I, I want to speak out there for um, the young baby hairdressers. And I would like you to um, maybe Philip go first and tell us a little bit about like, what inspired you to go to school? Where did you go to actually hair academy and you know fill us in on that give us some insight well uh when i started originally um 15 i was um i was asked to leave school i didn't volunteer um <laughs> the headmaster uh, gave me an envelope and said we'd like you to take this home to your mother. And I said, okay, fine, no big deal. Not that I really gave a shit much in those, in those <laughs> days, but, and I took it home and my mother says, well, open it. And I read it and it says, we think to the betterment of the um, English school system that your son no longer attends school. So oh. I thought, what? okay, I'll do that. So oh. it was, what did I want to do then? I've always, I know it sounds really- Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> was it because of the fact, was it because of your academic grade level oh, or was I it mean, because you were, you were <laughs> caught goofing off? Um, or all of the above. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mary. Um, I don't know if it was really, I had this attention deficit. I know today they say A, B, C, D, E, E, got all these. I had one really significant if I had very little interest in listening or watching a person within the schooling system, I didn't shut them down. I just went off elsewhere. In your head. In my head. 
I love it. And I would, okay. I would go off and think, you know, what would I rather be doing? And I, I got into that world where I did not know the term entrepreneurial from where I came from. So I came from a very poor family in England, but we didn't know, you know, that old story about didn't know we were poor because there was a lot of love and warmth from our mother. Right. And, you know, we ate when we were hungry. There's a roof over our head. And there was always sort of like a creative aspect around the world that, that I was in, especially with my mom. So she goes, well, you're going to go down to, you'll continue going with me. So she used to drag me um, to the outskirts of our town and there's a salon and the salon, God, I, I usually remember, I can't remember right now. And um, it was a friend of my mother and she goes, you can shampoo, make some money. And I said, shampoo what? She goes, the old women. And I went, oh God, what a fool. And so I'd get in there and there's these old women with cigarette holders and cigarettes with the ash falling down and <laughs> under the dryer asleep legs open and I'm going oh no no and I'd shampoo them but this is what where I realized I'd found something because I realized the more that I would massage and work the shampoo and, and take them on a bullshit story about what this is doing I had no idea I, I made it all up and at the end of their session they would actually give me tips and say oh my god that guy what that young man, when he does the shampoos, I'd come just for that. It started to click. Then I had to work out where wow. I want to go. And um, I had the ability to go to, there's a town called Bournemouth where I come from, which is about 80 miles southwest of London. And it is the school to go to. It was like creative and it was technology and creativity all in one. And I tried to go in and I applied and they had this hairdressing course, which was three years, full time, two year apprenticeship. So we did five year apprenticeships and that was the law to get the London wow. City built. So I went in at probably 15 years old or whatever. And I said, well, I'd like to, to become, you know, come to the college. And they said, well, you're too young. You can't do it. You don't have the qualifications. So I thought, well, I need to get some more, some, some substantial to do this. And so I used to get on the train in the morning. I used to have my backpack, well, it wasn't a backpack, it was a rag wrapped in with stuff I'd take with me. And I'd get on this post train in the morning. Like a hobo? Yeah. <laughs> but I will tell you, a very well-groomed, good-looking oh, oh, hobo. Of course. <laughs> Sorry. And, the train never stopped in my town. It just slowed down. And I used to jump on it and then go into London. And I was just, by today's standards, extremely young. And I always, you always heard it on the, the local television, Vidal Sassoon, Vidal Sassoon, Teasy Weezy T, and used to think, I want to be with them. I want to be one of them. And I knew that's what I want. And I mean, I did my fair share of like hanging out in parks and making ends meet and one day I was in, in um, Davis Mews and I walked up and there was the salon, stark white and black and sort of mauled and cool and everything was going on and it was like a vibe. And I thought, oh, I want to work there. And I put my nose up to the window and I smudged it. And this hairdresser came out and says, get your bloody your nose off the window. <laughs> I've just cleaned that, I've just wind says, butter off. Later to find out, even 40 odd years later, that um, Maurice Tidey was the art director. Now, and uh, I laugh about it. I say, you were the one who told me to buy No, Philip, I didn't. I go, yes, you did. <laughs> oh, but here's wow. what you inspired me to do. I really wanted to work there. But at that time, getting into Vidal's was extremely difficult. I mean, you fought to get in that salon, salons. It wasn't a case of, I'd like to work here. My sure, so a million people. So, mm -hmm the prestige was such a high level that I thought, well, I'll go and work for, at the time, Teasy Weezy, who was this flamboyant Salvador Dali hairdresser. I'd always have a velvet cloak, had two Afghan hounds, his white Rose Royce. He was mega power. Um, in Bournemouth, he had a salon and of course London. And I wanted to work there. And this is what we had to do in the morning. I got a job there as the shampoo boy. 
you had to stand at ATM in the morning and do this with your hands in a white coat, dicky bow tie, patent black shoes, and you put your hands up. And he, with his entourage, walked past the line of all that worked in his environment, checking out your manicure, your nails. My God. What your hands look like. Okay, and then he would get one of the art directors to walk behind you and tap you on the shoulder. You didn't want that tap, because that meant go home. Go home. <laughs> oh, get yourself shit. Out of home. Seriously. I went home twice in a week, and it, I was like, I'm done. But I graduated with him to being the roller boy. Wow. Roller setting. Wow. With metal rods about this big with a pin that I could like yesterday. And I would do about 30 sets a day. And then I would take them out of the dryer, but I had to, it all had to be done in sequence. I'd take them out of the dryer. And the minute that I released the metal roller, I would re-roll it with my fingers, pin clip it. And he would come down the line while the hair was still warm, pick up each section that the roller was and cut. Oh my God. That really? is fascinating. Isn't it? Cool? And the hair was still moderately warm. He would cut the shape of the rollers. Now imagine if one of the rollers was still damp or not put in properly. It would have been, I, I didn't experience that, I, but it, it was one of the guys there that said, then you should see what Alexander of Paris did or does. And I thought, I'm off to Paris. <laughs> I was broke, I had no money. I don't know why Dover to Calais, I mean, I somehow did it, I was in Paris. And, um, that was your ADD kicking in. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And I walked up and there <laughs> in um, Chalier was this mansion, four-story mansion. It was Alexander of Paris's domain. So wow. the first level was about 120 <laughs> stylists. Second level was about 40 art directors. Then the Shit. mezzanine came out where him and it was his son and daughter or two daughters. That's where he worked. But you weren't allowed there because the, there was only one way into the salon, was in the back through a private elevator, which had security guards on it. So at night, I used to walk in. I'd, I'd be sweeping the floors, cleaning the toilet. I should never probably add that part in, but I did do it. Yeah, you know what, you should, because remember, oh, these are goodness. students that I have in my college right now that need to hear about this. So yeah, you're hitting this right on the head. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> well, you Highlight, check. <laughs> yeah, well, here was the thing. There were three levels, of course, and I was the gopher on level one. So oh. I would go and get <laughs> so I would go and get tea and, and everything for the directors. Okay. And then one night I I don't know how it happened, I made my way to the second floor, and he is finishing off a client. And it must have been a client of prestige because there were bodyguards and he did kings and queens and superstars and all this. And um, I'm watching him cut hair. And I couldn't see it because I was a Sassoon fanatic. Well, Teasy Weezy comes Sassoon. But I watched this <laughs> Salvador Dali cut hair where he had a Mason Pearson brush. And then he would put a comb on top. And he would, together, then he would take the blade or a razor and he would follow the direction of the brushes to the front with the razor following. I love that. Oh, Joseph, can, and, and the work was absolutely spectacular. But it was done all by hand and fill. And that was basically, in my mind, a start of the creation of the Wilson Method, which yes, is combs and, and brushes, mm -hmm. as opposed to, and I still do palm to palm. I mean, I love cutting palm to palm. But you, Here's what I would say, fast forwarding to your students. Hey Mary, listen, turn your video off if you could. Listen to what you're being told. Mary Nyman. Hi Mary Nyman. You can, hi. <laughs> you can Mary get, Nyman. Um, we know Mary Nyman. <laughs> you, can, you can get a student that's being taught, but that doesn't mean they're listening. Right. And if they don't listen, they're not absorbing. So, this tends to happen. So my thing to them is get your frame, your canvas. I always look like an art piece. Frame and canvas, frame, 
is your basic fundamental training. You must have that. The canvas is where you want to take the journey on. What you paint is you. And when you can understand that there's more to our industry than you can imagine, it's, it's, it's infinity. You can be anything, do anything. Theater, editorial, behind the, it's, it's, there's a million things you can do. And basically, as Cassie was saying, if you have this training, the fundamental basics, and you have not the gene, but the drive to do it, you can go anywhere in the world and do anything. Yeah. I was on cruise ships in, in, around the Mediterranean in Greece, ended up in Santorini in Greece for, um. forever. And I didn't even know, don't remember being there. I think I was probably, <laughs> doesn't matter. So it was the seventies. So well, I want I want to tell you something that that that's more of a fascinating story that's worth uh, putting in this documentary. That that's crazy. Did you ever get back to Sassoon? Oh yeah, of course. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so where were you? Uh, I was a I was a sweeper there, and I was a nobody. But one person I became Elan Sassoon, Fidel's son, um, when he was a tiny little pain in the ass kid. I, <laughs> Beverly used to ask me to look after him. And then yes. I cut Beverly's hair a few times and her and I became real close. And Alan was, he was a sweetie pie. And the fact he introduced Mary and I when they chose us to do Vidal's memorial at Naha, um, when he introduced me, for me, it wasn't what we did on stage and what Mary brilliantly produced. But the fact is that Maurice Tidy was standing next to me. Yeah, right there. And I'm on there with Vivian, him and Vivian, Vivian awesome. and Fernando Romero were, were up there. It was the fact is that Alan introduced me knowing that he was a little tiny baby <laughs> when I used to look after him. Wow, I that is so cool, really. But there was an offshoot, Joseph of Sassoon's, and it was called the Elbow Room Guys. That was Paul Garrett, Flint Winthrop, um, Russell Williams. It was in the center of London on Moulton Street, and it's called Elbow Room. And we were the offshoot of Sassoon. And okay. a lot of people stayed with Vidal forever. I was there enough to watch genius and beauty and vision that it then i joined the offshoot group i don't know if it's right wrong or different isn't time. it fair to say that you didn't want to follow the rules i would say that's a huge thing yes like that. yeah like if there's a rule he's going to figure out how to break it I push the envelope. yeah but, but hence getting kicked out of school i like that Actually, yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like, yeah. I like, I like that whole... It's true. He gives me a hard time still to this day. I mean, look, I haven't even told you where I'm from yet. What do we... Oh. It's a, it, oh, time's up. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I was no. speaking of that. Let me jump in here and ask you a question, Mary. Yes. <laughs> Which living person do you admire most and why? Oh my gosh, living first time. Well, first of all, let me tell you where I'm from because I want to ask, I want to answer Joseph's question. I am originally from Iowa, so I'm a Midwestern girl. My mom is a hairdresser and it's all I ever wanted to do. And I had never touched hair because I respected that you needed to go to school for it. So I wasn't one of those kids that played with hair. I wasn't, you know, I was always watch my mom, but I never did hair myself. When I was in school, I, for whatever reason, I didn't have these big dreams to go around the world, but I just, there was something about me was like, go to the same place every day and do the same thing. Oh my gosh, I don't know, do, is, do, and what I realized years later when I started working with Philip is that I didn't have the creative eye. So if someone came to me with long straight hair and said, create and do whatever you wanted, there's no way that, that just scared me to death because if someone had a picture I could break it down and, you know, and be able to understand how it worked technically, but I didn't have that artistic side. So I decided to become an instructor 
and I was a recruiter for my school that I worked at. So in my, you know, I was 19 oh, years okay. old. I graduated yeah. from school. I was like really ambitious. I would drive around and go to high schools <laughs> and talk to students. And then I moved to California with the guy I was dating, not this guy. But, and I started working for Lonza as an okay. outside salesperson. I did my own education after a while because the educator wouldn't show up. And I said, I know how to do this. Will you let me do this? And the company <laughs> said, yes. And I left 10 years later as the vice president of sales and education um, in those very early. So it was really cool to be a part of a company when they started. I mean, literally I started in the field when they were tiny and that's where I met Philip and we started traveling. So I would MC wow. um, the show. So we traveled around wow. the world and, and got to, you know, see and do lots of great things. But the lesson for me in that, and for those that are listening is that always know that there's more to the industry than just working behind the chair. So if the hair talent mm. doesn't inspire you, what are other things that you could possibly yeah. look at doing in the industry? Because there are so many wonderful. Once you've got that license, you've earned the right to speak to hairdressers. We don't want to hear from someone that doesn't know what we're all about, right? And so here, there's here. just, That's I so love true. talking to students about all the possibilities. You know, as Cassie is talking about traveling and doing education and training and leadership and all the wonderful things that, that might make our industry so cool. So Cassie, to answer your question, the person that, that I admire the most is Anne Mincy Jaton, who you guys have had on here too. She is a dear friend of mine. We do our retreats together and no kidding. we were oh. colleagues. Yeah, we were colleagues for a year. We were colleagues at Redkin. We were colleagues when I was at Matrix and she was at Redkin. We'd pass on the escalator, say hi. And then one year we came together at this event and she had just launched her book. And I was reading her book because I had a lot of spare time with what I was there doing. And I just said, what would you think about creating this experience around the five points of the star and creating an opportunity for hairdressers to gather and breathe and stretch and yeah. be silent and learn awesome. the tools that we need to, to relax and rejuvenate. And then over the many, many years since, many, many years since, we've become the closest of friends. And she always inspires me. She always grounds me. She always helps me bring it back in when I'm getting out here. So I really admire her. Yeah. Yeah, she's definitely, I spent 20 years either working full time for Redkin or traveling on stage with all of the amazing artists. Mm -hmm. And she just, every time I think when she was on, and the biggest thing that you notice is when she's talking to you, she's talking to you. Oh yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. And she has a line of people waiting to speak to her. Right. Yes. And they'll just stand there and wait. And she's yes. like, right with that one person. I know yes. I admire that so much. Yes. Yeah. You know, when I was working on stage with Anne, she would always give me a kiss. Like she would kiss me and then leave her lip marks there. And I wouldn't <laughs> wash my face for days, but people would come up to me. People would come up to me and go, oh, you have something on your face. I'm like, ah, ah. Don't, don't touch. Touch don't me. Touch that. <laughs> That's, That's my so funny. <laughs> What yeah. about you, Bob? Who Who do you admire? Wow. That's, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> other than other than my wife, I have to tell you, there's we get asked this question, uh, okay. Cassie, all the time. How do you and Mary? You've been together since Lanza days in the '80s, and you know we were the first Caucasian um, artist to perform in Korea, in Seoul, Korea, and like with Red Kim, we were the ones with Kristen Frell and uh, that launched the Academy on Fifth. The exchange. Or the exchange. <laughs> yep. I think that, that um, I hold my wife in the highest esteem. Oh, that's so sweet. I was only kidding. No. We didn't have to say I, I, Because with our new company, Wilson Collective, for example, she has the ability. What impresses me is that when a person does a thing, you go great. But when they do many things great, <laughs> They have the ability with many spinning plates to know what to do, how to use them. She has this uncanny ability. Um, and she forgot to tell you that when she was vice president of Matrix, vice oh, president of marketing with she, she's done so many cool things from where mm -hmm. she started that I would say that um, my wife being one 
and I would say um, Videl too, oh. because I I loved. Um, there's pictures with him and I. I mean, I had a, a sort of a personal relationship with him, and um, he was always honest. He was always true to his word, and he was never out to hurt anyone or discourage anyone. He was out to help and direct. A very rare entity in human being. So I would say he played a pretty big role in my life. Earlier, wow. early on the, that he created that mm -hmm. canvas for me to paint my career. And he had that same talent too, where when you were the person he was oh, speaking yes. to, he was 100% fully there. So being present and showing up for people and you know staying grounded and being wherever you are being right there it matters and when people feel like you care about them it matters and Cassie you'll appreciate this when we were in Barcelona with the um, global, global, global Salon Business Awards, global Salon Business Awards mm -hmm. um, him and I um, he was by the pole course there's an entourage of people around and they started to disperse and he saw me and he goes, come on, come on, come on. So we sat in deck chairs next to each other and he said, um, and I'll never forget this, I'm very proud of you because you took what I taught you and you put your own spirit mm -hmm. and your own technique and way you design hair to it. And you know what that means coming from The him. king. Wow. Yeah. So when people say, and I hear us, you know, oh, the Wilson method, the guy is like, he's crazy, yeah, he's great. And then all some people go, no, have you tried it? Because people called Fidel, he worked with TZ Weezy, and they called Fidel an absolute outsider and a crazy Jewish boy from the wrong end of London. That's what <laughs> I used to hear. So look what most men. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, the same motivates us that mm -hmm. the method we have with ours has been years in the making, is precision, speed, and yeah. beauty, time for you then to personalize each and every design. I love that. that. Mm -hmm. I love that, mine. you guys, yeah, it's the push. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's the push, at the, yes. At the end of the day, really successful people, they listen to what other people have to say, but they can't, they don't take it to heart. You can't, whatever someone reflects at you, it's what they're going through, not what you're going through. So you get to decide, right? Whether you take it in or not. You're like, oh, okay, thanks for the input. And, you know. and when we stand in front of the new generation, like now, and they watch you bring combs together, or you go in with a blade and put perfection and precision in a Sassoon hair design, but with a no touch with the hands, all of a sudden, this new generation go, yeah. oh my God, I want to do that. Yeah. But then you'll yeah. hear people saying, well, you know, it's very difficult. You know, it's not, it's not, it's quite simple. It's right. just knowing how to control eye-hand coordination and seeing the beauty in head curvature mm -hmm. to create an individual design. And you know, I, that is such a great point, Philip, and to kind of tack into the whole principle-based design, which mm -hmm. also Thanks started to teach. Right, right? Yeah. exactly, yeah. totally. It's that foundation. You have, yes. it's like color. You got mm -hmm. to know, just as the pen is gonna drop, grab yes. it, take it, you've got primary colors, you've got secondary colors, you have true shirt. Yes. They're not mm -hmm. gonna change. So what you just said is like, mm -hmm. Yes, so, it's so true. it is true, yeah. you guys, and I and and I will say this, and I've said this on many of of these iconics, being around the students as I am, and also having them come into our salon, and then I take them to the next level. You know, in the last couple of years, I'm really getting tired of of uh, unicorn blues and pinks, and you know they've oh. they and you know <clears throat> you guys. You need to know this, and I'm sure you do already. I mean, where I came from was Terry Donnelly creating the compass cutting team, and I was one of the first of 30 on that. So yeah. I'm a cutter. I can color the hell out of hair, but I feel they need to know that. And you know, you would agree with me, right? I mean, hair that's long is awesome and beautiful, right. but the haircut starts above the shoulder. Right, when you really get right. to perform and mm -hmm. use combs and razors and shears mm -hmm. and, 
I want and need to bring that back to the schools because they're being distracted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're being we distracted. Well, so I have a theory on that. The reason that this is happening is that students learn what they get to practice. And if everyone's coming in and getting a single line cut across the back and they're coloring, they know how to do that. And then all of a sudden, when we start getting mm -hmm. closer to the head, they don't know how to do it because they haven't practiced. We have people tell us all the time, I'm, I'm afraid to cut hair. And you think how much practice that we all had in school, it's what you, you know, perms, I'm, I'm going way back. You know, I think I did one razor yeah. cut. I cut my finger. <laughs> I was wiping it on the towel the whole time and I missed the razor cutting day. And it took me years before I started, took an actual advanced class and learned how to cut with a razor. So you practice what you get put in front of you. And you know, the last few years with all the long straight hair, there hasn't been an opportunity. If there's but a just, shift. There's but a, that there's doesn't mean- That's good. It doesn't mean there's that the color shouldn't be involved in your work. Oh, no. It's, here's, here's and, and I totally agree with what Mary said. It's that case of when someone says, I just cut, or I just color, or I just, I just, I don't disagree with that, but I know what, like if we're working, we recently working with um, Jessica uh, Warburton mm -hmm. and Sue Pemberton. Um, when Sue and I and Mary were working on the British uh, hair invasion at our house in Palm Springs recently, it was, Sue and I would talk about color placement and she goes, what are you going to cut? And I go, well, what are you fancy coloring? We each of us was pushing. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, you tell me, now you tell me. And in the end, we came to this joining mm -hmm. of where she says, well, I'd like to, are you going to bring it long here and short? I go, like a firefly, but with a hybrid front. She goes, I've got it. So when you watch a color creative mind go, and you watch a, a cutting, awesome mind go, bring them both back. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's incredible. You hear that, Cassie? It's yes. A, right? Yes. Yeah. It's, it, it's a, mm -hmm. it's, right. it, it, it is. And people say, well, um, you know, well, what do you know about color? You're, you're, a, you're a cutter. Everybody knows you're a cutter. And I go, dude, I used to be a colorist. Mm -hmm. And, and they go, well, what do you do with color? I go, well, here's the thing. Every, every hairdresser's dream um, in Europe is to win the L'Oreal Go Trophy at the Royal Arbor Hall in London. Mm. And that's where you get like 60 some odd thousand entries from 50 countries. Wow. And I got in the top three. Yikes. As a, as Good a for you. Wow. As a colorist. Went, as a colorist. And they said, well, who colored it? I went, I colored it. Well, who cut it? Uh, I cut it. Well, why are you coloring and cut? I said, because I love both. So, yeah. you know, That's when silly. Mary says about what a student, the passion is and where they're at, mm -hmm. it's stay open because you don't know. You know, you might yeah. go for one thing and find on that journey there, wow, I, I think I like this even more. Keep yes. an open mind. And that your I education agree. doesn't stop when your no. school does. <laughs> no. Because no, I mean, there's for us, like last weekend, we were part of the revival education experience. And we were on Sunday. So we decided we weren't going to watch it before. Like, oh, what's oh, yeah. Vivian doing? Oh, what's Joe? It's like, you know what? Let's not watch before us, but we'll watch after us. And so Philip sat the whole day Monday with his little notepad and he watched everyone all day. I listened That's to so him, cool. Nick, and he I, loved it. He couldn't tear himself away. Yeah. I listened so. to I listened to Beth. I, we love Beth. I listen to Beth. Listen to Sue, Viv, um, uh, uh, Joe Blackwell. Joe. Listen to Joe. Nicholas French. Nicholas yeah. French. Awesome. Ruth Roche. So I'm oh, yeah. I'm right. And all these bullet points I go, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Uh -huh. Yeah. And people go, we mean it. No, you've been doing it for decades. And I yeah. go, what does that actually mean? I've been doing it yeah. for decades. I've just picked up an idea. I watch um, <laughs> yeah. just cut the front. Yeah. And I'm gonna do that from now on. They go, you don't do that? I go, no, that's why I've written it down. <laughs> so, it's she, cool. you know, it's, yeah. Well, it's you guys cool. listen, it's, it's important that the icons come back and really reform mm -hmm. what it was we did. We're still living, walking, breathing, talking 
Um, and you know, it, with the power invested in me and who I know, what I know, what I've done, I'm going to bring us all back. We have to, we just have to. So I'm just building a base, yeah. you know, but we all Good have the you. same, we all have the same concept. You know, mm -hmm. um, Cassie and I are working on a project right now and you guys are going to love it when I can tell you a little bit more about it because you're going to understand because the knowledge of what you do is very similar mm -hmm. to what, uh, you, you know, if you don't reinvent it, you got to reinvent it. Like, like you, I think said Philip, you know, he, that's why you went to the elbow room for God's sakes. That was just like mm -hmm. me. You know, I learned the whole compass cutting thing. I nailed it. And then it was actually, once I got through the whole fear of it, I was actually able to have a little humor on stage while I was cutting, right? Because I could right, do it. Right. right. And, and now I, I'm around these, these kids and outside the fact that they've got state boards, all right? I get that. And I tell them, just know it and do it and maybe learn it a, again a week before you go. Because you know yeah. you're not going to need to know that. But what you do need to know is how to cut outside the box and know how to establish the shape. Because another thing that's really missing is wigs and extensions. And I'm trying oh, to yeah. change that whole philosophy. They're yeah. not learning about any of that. Right. And they Especially really need to, to help yeah. clients that yeah. are in need of hair. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I want to, Mary, touch a, touch a little bit on what you have behind you that I'm seeing. Like, so, what do you have um, behind you? Just, yeah, just over a year ago, um, Philip and I, like you, like both of you, we have worked for so many, with so many different companies and so many great brands over the years. And it, it was feeling like everything that we've ever helped to build, you could now walk into CVS Pharmacy yeah. and see it on the shelf. You can oh. walk into TJ Maxx, <laughs> you can go on Amazon. So yeah. we're like, yeah. you know, and we really, we've spent our whole lives being part of the professional industry. We've really never been on the other consumer side of it. In fact, we don't even do haircutting on Instagram, we only do it in our Facebook pros only group because we believe that you shouldn't be sharing that with, can put it in the wrong hands Thank and you. heaven knows what will happen. Thank you so, very much for so, doing that. Yes, yeah, so one thing? you one may. Thing. I have a, of someone who I love dearly, Charlie Price. And Charlie, Charlie, yeah. Yeah, Charlie has been with us, um, helping us with uh, testing because we're good mm -hmm. buds. And I love what Charlie says. Please understand one thing. You cannot learn from YouTube. <laughs> that is a great saying. Thank you. We should put that on a t-shirt, you guys. You win? <laughs> no, you yeah, can. Yeah. Probably, Charlie probably already has, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Yeah. Sorry. So, so we decided that we needed to do something that was, that was ours and it, you know, funded, we've had, it's funded with our own money. We have a small number of SKUs, but we wanted to make something that we could protect. And so we decided uh -huh. to sell direct to salons instead yeah. of selling through distributors because there is another level of channel or opportunity for something to slip through the cracks, right? Love so it. Mary, we, Mary, we Mary, 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 yeah. don't you dare stop what you're talking about, but guess who's going to join us right now? Anne, keep talking. Is Here she, she comes. Is she? So, awesome. okay. so keep going. Okay, so when we decided that we wanted to do this, we had a really great, you know, structure in which how we, we wanted to go to market with salons. Then we had to say, okay, that's all great, but what's different for the consumer, right? Because you've got to have that consumer challenge, that opportunity, something that's different that salons can be able to sell to their clients. And so I was going to Peru for a yoga retreat, and I literally said to Phil, I'm like, if you're okay with me going to Peru, we should look into any new ingredient technology, like something that is being made there that comes from the rainforest. Because I was going to go there. I went to Machu Picchu in the rainforest and I did a very modern thing. I did a Google search and I found Sacha Inchi oil, this beautiful so cool. plant, nut, a, a, a tree nut, that grow, a seed that grows. I love the, the nut. Yes, so Sacha Inchi is our key ingredient in all of our products. So we ordered some of that oil and we started to play with it. And we're like, yeah, this is this is cool. I got to hold the plant. I brought, I snuck home actually a couple of pods that are you know, in, in the bottom of my tennis shoe, wrapped into a lot, wrapped in some paper towel. 
And so this story began for it. So this particular, this um, Satcha Inchi oil actually does, um, you can find it in your Whole Foods and some skincare and, and hair care, but not in the professional market. So we were the first to bring it to the professional market. Yes. Yes, apparently another huge company is going to start using it. So I guess we should be flattered. Um, so Satcha Inchi oil is high in amino acids, three, six, and nine. So what it does is it deeply cleanses the scalp at the same time that it conditions the hair. So it's a beautiful, I love that. Um, beautiful oil. Yeah. I love that. Then I we said, that. okay, you know, we're tired of, as you guys would be too, I'm sure at this point, I jumping on airplanes too. every weekend. And so what we did is we bought an RV and we wrapped it with our brand and we spent the first seven months of our launch out in the United States. So we went that to 30, is awesome. 40, 40, 41 states. 32,000 miles. Oh, yeah. Damn. That's in the yeah. coolest wrapped vehicle you've ever seen <laughs> with all of our, with all these. And we're still married. Outside. That's the most amazing yeah. part. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because that shower is little. Isn't that a shower yes. little? Well, you know, the, the, <laughs> the, the wonderful thing about traveling as much as we have over the years is that we truly do have friends all over the country. So 80% of the time we were staying, we stayed with Annie, we stayed with Neil Dukoff multiple times, we stayed with Gino, Gino Stempora. No, sorry, Gino, Gino Stempora. Gino, Bonnie Conti. So oh. honestly, you know, it was kind of a, a fun tour, Marina. friends and family tour yeah. at the same time. So yeah, it was great. It was great. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. But well, we brought I am, with, I am very with proud of you guys. Well, with, when we, we got with uh, Be Strong, our shampoo and conditioner, then we both went on a journey of, if we're standing behind the chair, what is it that a stylist needs? Do you need 27 gels? <laughs> God, 49 you know what? hairsprays? Only 23. Come on. So we worked on one which is called Don't Stress It, which is Detangler. Use it to cut with. Well, Mary says that she doesn't... Um, she was more into the teaching and the marketing. She happens to be an absolutely fabulous hair cutter. Oh, thank you very I much. I want that record. Oh, fabulous that's hair. beautiful. I used to teach the principles of hair cutting she, with yes. Sam and Chris. Chris yeah. And the, Kenny the, Mark. Yeah. We were the first four people that taught it. At the exchange. I love time. that. So yeah. we then did yeah. the Don't Stress It which is, to me, is 24 karat gold because it's, you know, it's a detangler, deodorizer, you can cut with it. It balances the moisture in the fabric. So when you're cutting, you're cutting on a fabric that's consistently coated. So it's not, you know, keep re-wetting, keep re-wetting. Because what yep. I, the students need to, the minute you go from one side of the head to the other, wet, cut it, it's almost dry, go back here, wet. That's two entirely different. Yep. Mm -hmm. elasticities in the hair so now you've got design you can relate to this joseph where you get them where you've got oh well that's asymmetric no baby it's a shitty ball <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but we'll call it asymmetric <laughs> but then we got into oh, a, a gel which is like a hybrid it's a cream gel mm -hmm. then What's into the called? sachi star both ways oh good job and it's got um it's got, Mary will be leaving now for the bathroom. Um, so then we've got the Saatchi and Jewel. And then we've got a hairspray. You have to check this one out. It's called Final Act. It is about a five to six hold, but you can brush it out and reapply. It's not like spray and now you're stuck. This is, you can play with, it's incredible. And then Mary came up with, we need the next category. So we came up with Calm Down, which is the new shampoo conditioner. And wait for this, a styling bomb <laughs> that looks like it's gold in the hand. So when you place it into the hair, blow dry in, it's like glass. Love that. It's incredible. That will Love be that. the first uh, quarter of this coming year. Mm -hmm. So Breaking news. That's what we've been working that on. That is. With here. <laughs> but the beauty is yeah. that we're education yeah. first. The one more thing on the product too, we decided to that we wanted to use all essential oils yes. in our fragrancing. So we have no artificial fragrancing, no. which to some people is really important. It seems to be more and more. For me, it was is really crucial. I get 
migraines, you know, just anything that's artificially fragranced. Yeah, that's um, called something. Um, what is that called? What, the artificial uh, smell and products. Does it start with an A? Yeah. It's like an A-H something? I think it's called disgusting. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah. It's nasty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I could go past the candle store and sniff for oh, hours yeah. on end. Yeah. yeah. Like, I can't, yeah. In, in a mall, I can't walk by a Bath and Body Works. It just, what's wafting yeah, out it, of it. It does just... seep. It does seep. Do you yeah. remember Abercrombie and what that smelled oh. like? Oh, yeah. yeah. And you can even oh. hear it spraying. Like, yeah, I couldn't go in there. I I'm like, yes. what the heck? It just got stronger. Yeah. They would spray yeah. it. There's also the um, Metropolitan. What's that hotel in Vegas where oh, they yeah. pipe it in? Yeah. Do that oh, like I yeah. think they've stopped because I think they realize that that's Isn't not working. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Metropolitan in yes. that whole complex. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just like. So I have a question, Philip. I'll start with you first. It is what is the most important lesson life has taught you? Um. Value your family in particular your mum, because when they're no longer around, life changes. Amen. And it's taught me to just try to be humble and nice, and um, which she was like my lady. Um, her passing, it's, 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 it still continues to teach me today. Don't, don't, just value what, you have now and be nice yeah be nice. i miss my mom too yeah i really i it's a long time but even christmas for me is my time of the year but my mom used to she silent night was her christmas uh, carol and at midnight it's the last thing i want to hear but it's the first thing i want to hear and, and um so really cassie an answer to your question just appreciate and value what you've got today because tomorrow yep. could be a totally different thing. Yes. So true. Beautiful. You passing that on to Mary? Yeah, Mary. What about you, Mary? You know, for me, I think the greatest lesson that I learned is to continue to be persistent, to keep moving forward, that every nobody's dreams are easily achieved that nothing that we want is two steps away, it's at least 10 steps away. Yeah. And that to continue to focus on that ultimate goal and enjoy the process along the way, right? So, so yeah, there's always gonna be setbacks. I think um, that I'm 56 years old and I feel like I'm still a kid, you know? So, so all of you that are in your 20s saying, oh, I feel so young, you get to our age and you're like, I still feel so young. Yeah. So like, don't let anything hold you back. Don't, you know, have, and we all have all these things in our head that says, I'm not good enough. I'm not old enough. I'm not young enough. I'm not, you know, there's all kinds of knots and just, you know, putting up that stop sign in your subconscious and saying, no, none of that matters. This is what I want. And because what I've learned over the years is that fear stops creativity. You cannot have creative thoughts if you're in that space of fear. And it's, it's, it's there, they can't exist together. You can't, and you can't come from a place of love and fear at the same time. So shifting out of that, which so many people are, are experiencing right now as the world feels so much not in our control. So what can you control? Even if it's just right down to the breath, like what can you control in this moment and what can you, focus on now as you look at those achieving those dreams i think Love it's that. also like <clears throat> fight fight to find the joy and search for the light stay in the light every day stay in the light, in the light. Wow, yeah. stay in the light holy stay shit yeah. bring the light and don't let anybody else take it and away from you i'm not kidding turn the dimmer down stay in the light and search for joy you will find I, love, I I really like that. And I, I want to ask the both of you this, okay? I'm not going to ask one or the other. So I would appreciate it if you answer this as a unity of the both of you. <laughs> okay, we'll Got try. Got it? Yeah, we'll All try. All right. 
a time capsule is found 80 oh. years from now. And in it are icons names. And what would you like under the Wilsons? Sorry, you say, who would we like? For them what to, words what to would you like? Read up, yeah, if, if uh -huh. right, right, right. So in the back of an academy, the students are playing around and they find a ta time capsule and it's uh, uh, this yeah. list of all these icons. Mm -hmm. How would you like them to read about you? What would you like them to know mm -hmm. about what the two of you have done in this industry together to leave a footprint? How about that? Wow. Wow. I know. They inspired us. They loved us. They cared about us. They cared more about us than themselves. They led us in a way that helped us to grow. They held the ladder instead of climbing the ladder. That just that we are interested in really building community uh, more so than taking care of ourselves, I think. And of course, I want people to say that Philip Wilson changed their lives when it comes to cutting hair as well. And that the Wilson method was something that took them to the next level. Um, he's been told by people many times that I was just about ready to walk away from the industry because I was bored and this gave me a kind of a new lease on life. So I think that would be part of it. What would you like people it. to say about you? What would you I like people it. to say about me? Joy. I love it. Joy, love, community, life. I like yeah. it. I yeah. like it. All right, yeah. it's rolled back up. It's rolled back up and put back in the old time capsule. Yeah. I, I really, I, I really, really admire that. And I also um, have a yoga background. I, I went in depth for about seven years yeah. of my life where I did all the extremes in the, in the coaching of uh, yoga and even went away for 10 days and was stripped of everything like coffee, food, phones, technology. I mean, it was, you couldn't talk to anyone and there was 80 other people there. It was quite, it was quite, I wish that upon everyone. Do you know what I'm saying? I yes, mean, go right, you know, Rain yourself yeah. out. Yeah. And I was always jealous when I knew you and Ann were doing those retreats. And I thought, how does a boy get into the girl retreat? You know, and it's, and it's Anne, incredible what they yeah. do. And yeah. Ann would just eloquently just inform me that not at this time, Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> but awesome. I think I think it's time for a co ed one somewhere. I mean it. The, yeah, I put a really, I, the last one I did, I did my own in Tulum and it was, it was like the best thing ever. You yeah, know, it's awesome, it was a seven it? day retreat. That. Yeah. I'll so tell we'll, you what people want right now. They want to go anywhere and do right? anything. Yeah. We're like, wow, right. I think DR is going to, DR Destination Rejuvenation is going to sell out in minutes because we have so many people are just waiting for the, you know, the end to be booked. But yeah. Time is coming. Yeah, awesome. That would be awesome. And we honestly, every time that we do it, everyone in the class, all the women say, I wish that my spouse was here with me because I know I'm going to go back different. And I wish that they could have that same yeah. experience with me. Yes. So we, I would love to do it. We should talk yes. offline for sure. About I it. will. I'm going to keep on your tail about yeah, that. Let's yeah, let's do it. Because I think we can ring up a good 20 or 25 yeah. plus Agreed. people Agreed. easily. Agree. Yeah, yeah, I, I would love to do that. And, and somehow relate it to what we all do in the industry, the way we stand behind a chair, the way we, that's a, you that's know, all of that idea. stuff. So I like your yeah. thing. That yes. is, I, would I really that. like, because I like that's you. True. I know yeah. guys that we all know um, that right now, nothing would be finer for them to do a retreat like that. Mm -hmm. Because as Candy, we were, we were saying, Cassie, remember, about most of us were doing 50, I was averaging 50 to 55 flights a year. Oh, yeah. Nonstop, not year oh, after year crazy. after year after year after year. And now it is October and I've done one flight. I, I know. Uh, Philip, my question to you is, <clears throat> did you find yourself uh, using disposable briefs? Was that easier <laughs> to pack? Um, yes, 
<laughs> um, but also, um, I triple, I tripled layered them. <laughs> <laughs> they were this thick. Oh my God. He just wear yeah. them all on the plane and take them off each day. So you know. Right, right. Oh, it's time to run down to my last pair. <clears throat> oh I think, my I think God. someone said, do you have your dog in the back of your sweatshorts? <laughs> I go, no, it's just, no, no, let's go. But all of a sudden, there's so many of us that we all oh, know, that's funny. you know, that have lived in hotels and yep. hotel rooms and shows yep. nonstop. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, we have come to an almighty halt. I don't <laughs> think other industries realize how this has so affected our industry. Yeah. Um, yep. Well, that's so true. much is affected. It's unbelievable, but yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's that's the light. That's the light gray mm -hmm. side of it. The bright lights about to appear will be rocking back, but this time, and and Joseph, I'm going back to what you said, um, and I don't mind saying this on camera if it if people disagree with just it. Say allow, it. I, to just as merit, you both were saying one length, cut it and do 10 colors, that is as creative as washing dirty socks. <laughs> I'm sorry, but there's I'm there with one you. America. I'm it's, there with you. Yeah. I mean, you show know what? me, I'm... Show, as Cassie was saying, show me just a beautiful shaded color and an exquisite haircut, mm -hmm. this cut to my profile, yes. shadow from a creating shadow from above, yes. not below. So it flares yes. my cheekbones and my yes. jaw. And then Cassie comes in and does a beautiful color, not colors, color, mm -hmm. with maybe shading of highlight. Please come back. <laughs> Please come back. Yeah. It's that eye. It's that eye. I think that, I think that with the power that uh, you guys have with your cutting skills and, and you by, by far, you know, have the uh, the knowing of your tribe and your surrounding that um, you know you're you're going to make a huge difference. And I want to share with you that intuitionally, as you are both very insightful on the direction to which it has to go. If you haven't noticed, it's all going back to Philip. You said this, and I want you to know this. When Paula created the very first professional shampoo. Yes. It was Amino Pond. Yes. And it was for all hair types. Why all of those skews on my damn retail shelves? And then you know what? I'm gonna go as far as saying this. Go ahead and build a go on. Go ahead and build an Ulta. Yes. Go ahead and buy up all the mom and pop distributors so that you have salon centric and everyone has to go through you. You know what? The time has come. We need to go back. Back yeah. means what you guys are doing. It's fresh. Yes. It's hot. Yes. It's happening. Mm -hmm. um, I will do what I can in my power to promote because what mm -hmm. you are doing is what is it right now. Yeah, and it's, it's got to be that way. It just oh, has sweet. to, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and yeah. I'm glad that there are individuals like mm -hmm. you that have that brainology <laughs> that sees that to happen because it drives me freaking crazy. And I have an academy and yeah. you know, oh my God, it's like, I am such a rule breaker, Philip, Philip, I'm such a rule breaker that I have <laughs> all this crap thrown in front of me. Like, oh, you got to follow this because of NACIS, or you got to do this. I'm like, you know what? Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know what? The day that they knew NACIS was coming in to accredit our school, the woman in charge said, you better remove Joseph from the academy <laughs> completely. <laughs> I'm not kidding. We would and do you the know, same. We would do you the know same. what happened? Philip, true story. My academy in Wisconsin, right? Blizzard. Blizzard. We're waiting for a, 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 a Nacus to come. I'm seeing men in black, like the movie. Everyone's gonna be in black suits, white shirt, black tie with guns or something. And, and it's a blizzard. 
and I'm standing in front of my academy and up pulls this like taxi van and the door slides open and the first foot I see coming out is a rabbit slipper. And I was like, what the hell is that? And then she came fully out and then the others came out and apparently their flight was delayed. They were overnighted in an airport for 24 hours. They had no clothes. They're wearing their pajamas from the night before. They come into our school. They're completely stripped of who NACA should be. I'm getting them shampoo samples. I'm bringing them food. And you know what? They loved everything about what I was and who I was and what I did. Yeah. Because I wasn't the average academy that was afraid. And Beautiful. Mary, you said it. You can't be afraid to be creative. No. So, yeah. and, you, and, and another thing to that, Joseph, is that not being afraid to be different mm -hmm. is true. But I would also hesitate to say that be prepared for criticism mm -hmm. and critiquing yes. from your mm -hmm. this world. Oh, yeah. This world. Oh, right? God. Yeah. The minute, yeah. the minute yeah. no, you go true. against, yeah. as I said earlier on, the offshoot, mm -hmm. even when I was at Harrods mm -hmm. in London, I worked there for a while on the fifth floor. It, it was all away from a certain person's way of doing hair in London. So because you were an offshoot, you were, um, you were open for criticism. Even to this day, people go, oh, I do the Sassoon thing, I won't do what he's doing. I was hardcore Sassoon and used, as I said, as a frame and a canvas for me to paint with the Wilson method. Just wanted to be me. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Not yes. what everybody else mm -hmm. says you should be. Yeah. So yes. to the students, yeah. find you. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and you know what? That is a beautiful way to say thank you so much yeah. for both of you wow. taking your time and sharing with us your story. It is now forever embedded for even when we're gone and we're in heaven having wine, we will look down on um, the beautiful fetile students that are watching <laughs> this right now. So um, I just, I wanna thank you guys both, seriously. And I, and Cassie, I don't know if you have anything else to say. I, I want you guys to hold on a second before we end, but I wanted Cassie to have her last words with you if she, uh, wow. she had any in there. I've got chills right now, or as Jennifer Lopez on World of Dance would say, I've got goosies. <laughs> <laughs> this was so inspiring and so beautiful. You two are such a beautiful couple from the soul, and the things that you both, nuggets that you have said, are going to be forever here with us. And I would also love for you to email me all the information so we can put it on social media. I want to know yep. more about that product <clears throat> and to just keep in touch, just to stay, see how you're doing. And thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, pleasure. You're yeah, just- Thanks, fun. you guys. You're very welcome. Yeah.